morning, San Antonio starts right now. Making headlines this morning, it's Inauguration Day. Joe Biden will soon take the oath of office to become the 46th President of the United States. Outside with live cam, did you get any showers yesterday? Some did. It's uh, cooler this morning by, gosh, about 15 degrees. We're going to check in with Mike coming up in just a second, see how the midweek forecast is looking. Hi, good morning. It's Wednesday, January 20th. And that's right. And from snowmen to snowflakes, Stephanie still has the winter <laughs> theme going with her earrings this yeah, morning. She's trying to make it feel like January. Right. So it, it is a, a change this morning, Mike. Yeah, it does feel a little bit more like it. And uh, temperature right now pretty much is almost not going to move throughout the day. So it's going to be cold. Uh, it's this gonna, is it. I mean, chilly, yeah. And uh, it's going to be damp throughout the day. We do still have a few showers out there as of right now. And most of, of the rain is in the hill country as you can see we've got a couple of showers that are moving through town so again and this is on top of some of the rain we had yesterday the roads are still going to be damp so obviously you just want to kind of take your time this morning and as far as visibility there's a little bit of fog uh, lagrange has some victoria but also uh, rock springs down to uh, carrizo springs we do have some of the fog out there so that's something else to be on the lookout for 49 here in town uh, 51 new braunfels 51 in gonzalez a little bit cooler in the hill country and again we may move five degrees, six degrees, something like that throughout the day, but but it is going to be staying on the chilly side. Mountain Cedar and mold yesterday were both high. Mountain Cedar really went up and then we're going to have to see what this morning's count is in behind that front because it was fairly breezy yesterday. So temperatures this morning uh, will stay again, basically steady. A couple of showers around here, a little breezier this morning and then later on this afternoon, 57 for a high temperature. So we will be about uh, six, seven degrees below normal. That's going to change. It's going to be back to the warm side. We're going to kind of do a little bit of an up and down as far as temperatures over the next couple of days and then some more rain chances down the road. We'll talk more about that in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Samuel King. I know you Yesterday you were busy right out the right out of the gate. What about today? Hey, we have a repeat uh, today, uh, almost not quite as busy, but we do have an incident here. This is 1604 at I-10, uh, not really impacting traffic on 1604 or I-10 at the moment. You see that traffic flow is 67 uh, miles per hour. I also have a bit of a slowdown here in 281 uh, southbound at uh, Loop 410 uh, this morning, so that's something to watch out for. And taking a look at some travel times uh, coming in from Bernie and I. 10, 25 minutes, so that looks good. 28 minutes currently at the moment on 281 all the way from Bolverde into downtown San Antonio. 30 minutes and I-10 uh, coming from the east to Seguin. And here's a look at Transguide. This is the uh, view of what's happening there at I-10 at 1604. Looks like it's uh, on uh, the on-ramp there from uh, going west to uh, 16, from 1604 uh, east onto I-10. So that's something to watch out for this morning, folks. A historic moment for our country as Joe Biden becomes the 46th president later today. Kamala Harris will soon become the first female vice president. KSAT's Stephen Cavazos is live this morning with why some say this is a big step forward for our democracy. Yeah, that's right, Mark. Good morning. Now, it last year marks 100 years of the 19th Amendment, which gave women the right to vote. Now, following President-elect Joe Biden and Vice President-elect Kamala Harris's win back in November, we spoke to Grace Chimane, who is the president of the League of Women Voters of Texas. Now, she says it was a group of strong and heroic women that opened the door to democracy, but it wasn't easy. Chimane says that fight continued until 1965 when the Voting Rights Act was passed, which banned discriminatory voting practices. Now, she believes Harris is proof that any woman can be part of change. They see a leader who looks like them, that they know that they could participate in this democracy. They're truly a part of this wonderful government that America has created. Now, Shemaine also adds that early voting numbers in Texas show that more women voted in the general election than men, but only by a slight percentage. Now, she says there was also a slight increase in the number of women who voted than the 2016 general election. Now, coming up in the next half hour of GMSA, we'll hear from one local leader who shares who knows what it's like to break those barriers. And she shares her thoughts on this historic day. Mark Stephanie, over to you. And of course, KSAT has you covered for all, all the inauguration festivities today. ABC News will begin live coverage, followed by Good Morning America at 7, 8 a.m. It'll continue until 3 p.m., so no 
GMSA at 9 or noon newscast. The inaugural ceremony itself slated to begin around 10.30 a.m. You can also watch online at ksat.com and our KSAT TV app available on most streaming devices. Well, concern is growing over how slow COVID-19 vaccines are being distributed here in the U.S. ABC's Kaylee Hartung has more. Kathleen Dragovich among the first to line up at this vaccination site in Long Beach. Hello. With this shot, she's one step closer to seeing her 91-year-old mother, who she hasn't seen in over a year. How do you feel? I feel um, like I'm part of the solution, so... Feel great. Mega sites that can vaccinate thousands a day, opening up across LA County. The incoming CDC director detailing President elect Biden's vision to give 100 million doses in his first 100 days. These will be community vaccination centers, they will be mobile vans. Until then, states getting creative. Connecticut transforming an old runway into the state's largest drive through vaccination center, and Washington state turning to Starbucks and Costco to help boost distribution. But as more sites open up across the country, the supply of shots is quickly running out. The state of Michigan had a shortfall of about 50,000 vaccines. Without more shipments this week, New York City may have to start canceling appointments. We will have literally uh, nothing left to give as of Friday. Back in Long Beach, Mayor Robert Garcia's mission to get his city vaccinated is deeply personal. His mother and stepfather both died of COVID over the summer. I don't want people to go through like what I went through. And so I just I know every vaccine to me is like someone's life being saved. And with the vaccine in short supply, local officials are using their megaphones as best they can to advocate for more. The mayor of Long Beach here telling me he's spoken with the Biden administration and they understand there need to be changes in the distribution process. Kaylee Hartung, ABC News, Long Beach, California. And let's take a look at where we stand with coronavirus cases here at home. More than 2,000 new COVID-19 cases are being reported. There are also 10 new COVID-related deaths. More than 1,500 COVID-19 patients in local hospitals right now. 435 COVID-19 patients are in the intensive care unit and 257 are on ventilators. Metro Health has received their shipment of COVID-19 vaccine. Another round of appointments is coming up. Next round of appointments for the Alamo Dome will open up today. People who sign up tomorrow will be scheduled for Friday. You can sign up on the city's website or call city services at 311. We have a link on ksat.com. Later today, we're also expecting to learn how many doses of vaccine will be made available for University Health, which includes its distribution at the Wonderland of the Americas Mall. And time now is 437 and 50 degrees for now. Still ahead on GMSA, first look at a team participating in the inauguration today after reaching out to President-elect Biden for help. Plus, President Trump making some last-minute pardons before leaving office. We're going to tell you who was on the list. Outside with live cam. More rain today and how cool will it stay today? Mike does have the answers coming up on this inauguration day 2021. And welcome back. It's 440. Later today, President-elect Joe Biden will take the oath of office to become the 46th president. The inauguration will unfold at a U.S. Capitol encircled by security forces and devoid of crowds because of the threat of the coronavirus pandemic. Biden will look out over a capital city dotted with empty storefronts that attest to the pandemic's effect on the economy. Meanwhile, President Donald Trump is planning to depart Washington this morning ahead of the inauguration. One of his last acts as President Donald Trump issued a score of pardons and commutations. In total, there were 73 pardons, 70 commutations included in the list is former chief strategist Steve Bannon. Bannon accused of defrauding millions of dollars in a fundraising campaign purportedly aimed at supporting Trump's border wall. The president also granted clemency to rappers Lil Wayne and Kodak Black for various gun and drug charges. The pardons were issued early this morning. A U.S. Army soldier is in custody for attempting to help ISIS plan terror attacks. Prosecutors say 20-year-old Cole Bridges attempted to help plan an attack on the 9-11 memorial in New York City and on U.S. soldiers in the Middle East. They say in October, Bridges began communicating with an undercover FBI employee who was posing as an ISIS supporter in contact with ISIS fighters in the Middle East. Bridges faces charges of attempting to provide material support to ISIS and attempting to murder U.S. military service members. Bridges was arrested in Georgia, where he's based at Fort Stewart. A court hearing is set for Thursday. Our 
Our San Antonio Spurs are in San Francisco with a wrap up a brief West Coast road trip tonight when they face the Warriors. Spurs come into this game with a six and two record on the road, which is one of the best in the league. It's after beating teams like the Lakers and Clippers on the road and just a Monday night dominating the Portland Trailblazers. Things tip off at nine o'clock tonight, our time at Chase Arena in the Bay Area. Go Spurs go. Go Spurs go. Right now it's 442, 50 degrees. And up next, why a 13 year old boy is a special guest at today's presidential inauguration. In this morning's GMA First Look, it was one of the most touching moments from President-elect Joe Biden's journey to the White House. Hey, what's your name? An encounter on the rope line with 13-year-old Braden Harrington, who, just like Biden, grew up with a stutter. It took a lot of practice, but I promise you, I promise you, you can do it. I Braden took that encouragement to heart and months later gave Biden a pre-debate pep talk. The Harrington family is ruined for you. Now with President-elect Biden about to give the most important speech of his life, GMA caught up with Braden. As a normal kid, what's it like getting all this attention? Um, honestly, my parents do all the work. And coming up at 7 a.m., we'll hear much more from Braden and bring you full live coverage of this historic day. With your GMA First Look, I'm Will Reeve, ABC News, New York. If it sounds too good to be true, all together now, it probably yes. is. Thank you, group effort. <laughs> Text messages and emails are going around offering free access to Netflix. That's making the rounds. And some of you who got one asked if it's for real. 12 on your side's Marilyn Moritz has the answer. Netflix. It's become a pandemic pastime. The need to chill at home created a primetime opportunity for this, a tempting text message. Due to the pandemic, Netflix is giving everyone a free one-year subscription to help you stay at home. Free Netflix? Sounds good. Is it? Well, they always sound good. Too good. The Better Business Bureau warns it's a scam. Clicking on the link won't get you free Netflix, but it could cost you. It takes you to a fake Netflix page, which asks for sensitive information. One victim tells the BBB scam tracker even after they canceled the bogus offer, their credit card was charged. Netflix real page warns of fake text, saying it will never ask for credit cards, bank info, or Netflix passwords. To protect yourself, remember... As a general rule, companies really won't send you a text message if you haven't opted in, if you aren't already a client or given them authorization. Don't believe every text you get. Go directly to the source and don't click on unsolicited links. So best thing to do is just simply delete, ignore, you know, run the other direction, don't respond. And if you did click the link, Netflix says change your password. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Things to look out for. Always <laughs> got to be super vigilant about everything these days. I mean, I don't even think couponing safe anymore. <laughs> 448. Double check everything. I know. Yes. Yeah. Samuel standing by smiling. That's good news this morning. Good. Well, we do have uh, one uh, incident, uh, Mark and Stephanie, early this morning, and this is at 1604 at I-10. This is uh, the on-ramp from 1604 uh, west to I-10 east heading into downtown. So uh, not really impacting traffic on the roads themselves but uh, you'll see in a moment the uh, the on-ramp is uh, affected. Uh, we also have this construction later today in I-10, just uh, close to that area. This is between La Cantera Parkway and Welfare Road, uh, just working on doing some work out there, both the HOV lanes and the main lane, so watch out for that weather permitting, of course. And taking a look at the travel times here, again, not really impacting the travel times at this hour too much, 26 minutes uh, from downtown to Bernie and 25 minutes the other way, but we know that's a busy area, so that's something to watch out for later uh, today. And again, the travel time to downtown from 1604 looking good this morning. But here it is again, this uh, situation here. You see it's on the on-ramp. At least one uh, lane is closed. But again, the good thing is at this hour, there's not much traffic on the roads, but uh, that won't be the case a little later this morning. So we'll see how long this takes to clear, guys. Very good. Thank you, Samuel.
Mike Osterhage has a somewhat wintry looking scene. This must have been as things were changing <laughs> yesterday, right? Yeah, I mean, it was just gray all day long. We had some mm -hmm. showers, a couple of uh, heavy downpours at times, and then it sort of let up a little bit. But uh, the nice thing is at least temperatures are down because, yeah, yesterday we were about 15 degrees warmer. We were up in the mid-60s and topped off right around 70. And it's interesting, our low temperature yesterday was just before midnight because temperatures, of course, kept dropping. You could kind of feel it when that front moved through yesterday because just the air dried out somewhat and obviously things started to cool down. No rain showing up in this picture as of right now, but there is plenty of it out there, especially in portions of the uh, hill country. A couple of moderate showers and as you're getting ready to uh, head out in and around town, notice how we've got these few little showers moving through and this batch there in Medina County is sort of uh, now edging its way off to the east. So again, we will continue to have more rain around not only throughout the morning, but also uh, throughout a good chunk of the afternoon. I think by late afternoon things start to ease up a little bit and then ease up uh, later on this evening. Temperatures uh, basically mid upper 40s, 50 Port SA and then 43, 40 over there in Lost Maples and we're going to keep the rain around, like I said, throughout the rest of today and even a couple of showers going into tomorrow because we still have this upper low out there to the west of us. You can see that counterclockwise spin off the Baja of California, and that's pumping in all this moisture despite the fact, again, we were talking about this yesterday, we had the front move through, but it wasn't one of those that just swept everything out of here since we do have this overrunning situation. So that will remain the case, like I said, throughout most of today. And then tomorrow sort of eases up or eases up a little bit even today. Night. I think most of the rain is out of the area. A couple of leftover showers. Then we go into tomorrow and again a couple of scattered showers here and there. It's not going to be that big of a deal because that low will start to sort of fall apart a little bit as we go into tomorrow. And then Friday is looking like a better day because we'll have uh, more sunshine around here and temperatures will slowly go up into Friday. A little bit of a dip Saturday back up on Sunday and then more rain chances again come in here. Mm, probably not till late afternoon Saturday and then Sunday a better chance for some rain. So today pretty much uh, not that <laughs> what you see is what you get. I mean, we're in the upper 40s, 50 right now, and we only make it up to say the upper, excuse me, mid to upper 50s with still a few showers left over. And then, like I said, they start to ease up somewhat tonight. Tomorrow, a shower or two, 67 degrees, so slightly above normal all the way up to 75. Friday's going to be a pretty good looking day, very spring like 75 degrees around here. And then Saturday, we dip down a little bit, weak little front moves through, a couple of showers late, back up to the mid 70s Sunday with another rain chance and leftover Monday. And then I think we get another somewhat uh, kind of coolish down, if you will, not a big cold snap, but cool back down closer to normal by the uh, mid part of next week, get rid of some of the humidity as well. Well, definitely cooler this morning. Yeah, they're now drop down into the 40s. Yep. Uh, yeah. A little bit closer to normal. Yeah, at least it feels like January. Right, yeah. Normal <laughs> still is, you know, low 40s right now, but it ain't 65 like it was yesterday. No. <laughs> Thanks, Mike. 452, 49 degrees. And coming up next, why some of the music stars set to perform for today's inauguration say they're a little nervous. More music star set to perform for today's inauguration. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. In the last 12 months, Jennifer Lopez has performed before millions at the Super Bowl on New Year's Rock and Eve, and today the inauguration of Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. While she's been a superstar for decades, her fiance Alex Rodriguez revealed that today's inaugural performance has Lopez a little nervous. Rodriguez says J-Lo really wants to bring people together with her music. Starting next month, all five seasons of The Muppet Show will be available to stream on Disney+. Plus. Created by the legendary Jim Henson, The Muppet Show was a half-hour variety show featuring Kermit the Frog as the host. The series originally aired from 1976 to 1981. Now I and finally, the NFL announced that R&B star Jasmine Sullivan and country singer Eric Church will be singing the national anthem in Tampa at the Super Bowl. It ain't easy putting up with. Grammy-winning singer Her will perform America the Beautiful. If I let you, don't take me for granted. Smile. No. I never smile if I can help it.
Showing one's teeth is a submission signal in primates. The Office star Rain Wilson turns 55 today, and Bill Maher is 65. I've been on a, a bit of a news diet. Anything big happen? <laughs> uh, and that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Rena Roy, ABC News. Right now it is 457, 49 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, our inauguration day coverage continues as Joe Biden will soon be sworn in as the 46th president of the United States. Uh, Biden already causing a security concern because of some high-tech exercise equipment he wanted to bring to the White House. We have details coming up in Tech Bites. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. President-elect Joe Biden is set to become the 46th president of the United States. I'm ABC's Elizabeth Schulze, live from the Capitol. The latest on the inauguration coming up. Just now waking up, you will need a coat this morning. The temperature has changed quite a bit. A front has moved through. We're at 49 degrees. What about our rain chances? Mike will get you updated again. Good morning, everybody. It is Wednesday. It is January 20th. And we're going to get a check of weather and traffic in a moment. But first, it's Inauguration Day in Washington. So President-elect Joe Biden and Kamala Harris are set to be sworn in as president and vice president of the United States. Biden is expected to lay out his vision for how to unite the country. ABC's Elizabeth Schulze is live this morning at the U.S. Capitol in Washington with details. And there she is, ready to provide us this live report. Elizabeth, take it away. Good morning. Well, it's been two weeks since rioters mobbed this building here, and now the Capitol where we are standing is a fortress. The top priority today is a peaceful transfer of power as President-elect Joe Biden prepares to take the oath of office. In an inauguration unlike any other, Joe Biden is set to become the 46th president of the United States. Receive the president-elect opening his inaugural events with a solemn ceremony at the steps of the Lincoln May. Memorial. 400 lights to honor the more than 400,000 American lives lost in the pandemic. A sobering reminder of the crisis facing a divided nation as he takes office. To heal, we must remember. The president-elect will start his day at church, joined by congressional leaders from both parties. Today there will be no parade or inaugural balls. Instead of crowds, 200,000 flags will wave from the National Mall. Sources tell ABC News Biden will project a message of unity in his inaugural address. Speaking from the same sacred place that was stormed by pro-Trump rioters exactly two weeks ago. The Capitol is now surrounded by armed guard members, barricades and checkpoints. 25,000 National Guard members on hand to ensure a peaceful transfer of power. In a farewell video, President Trump wished Biden well without naming him. We inaugurate a new administration, and pray for its success. The president spent his final hours at the White House issuing a slew of pardons, including to former advisor Steve Bannon. Trump will break 150 years of tradition by not attending the inauguration. But Biden and Harris will be joined by former presidents Obama, Clinton, and Bush after the swearing in to lay a wreath at Arlington National Cemetery's Tomb of the Unknown Soldier. The former vice president will return to the White House this evening as commander in chief, prepared to issue a series of executive orders undoing some of Trump's signature policies. And in a nod to the history she'll be making today, soon to be Vice President Kamala Harris will be sworn in using the Bible of Thurgood Marshall, the first black justice on the Supreme Court. Elizabeth Schulze, ABC News, the Capitol. And a late breaking news now back here at home. San Antonio police are investigating a shooting in the downtown area this morning. This is happening in the 300 block of Avenue E. Our Katrina Weber is live there now. Good morning, Katrina. Well, good morning, Stephanie. Yeah, that, yeah, that address belongs to this building behind me. This is the uh, San Antonio Express News. We're on the back side of that on Alamo, but this is where police are working in a breezeway here. Uh, it looks like maybe a loading area uh, just inside that building. Now, this say that this shooting is not related to the newspaper at all. This man who was shot happened to walk in here telling them he was shot. This happened somewhere else. Uh, that man was shot in his upper body, they say, uh, in the neck area. He was rushed to a hospital, and police say that he was in a very critical condition when he was taken there. He's being treated right now. But they are processing the scene. It looks like they might have some clothing or some other evidence 
in this area. But again, they say that this building does belong to the newspaper, but it has nothing to do with the newspaper. This is just where the man ended up. They're not exactly sure where the shooting happened. They say they were not able to talk to the man uh, because of his condition. Reporting live downtown, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Katrina, thank you very much. All right, 504, 49 degrees. It's a little colder today than it was yesterday. Yesterday, totally humid, right, Mike? Oh, yeah, and yesterday was way out of whack because at this time we were uh, already above the, or had stayed above the normal high temperature for the day. A little closer to where we should be, although normal low is still in the low 40s. And uh, we've got lots of clouds out there. We do also have some rain and uh, just keep a rain jacket throughout the day. And temperatures won't be moving all that much. I mean, we'll gain five, six, seven degrees uh, throughout the course of the day, if indeed that. The aquifer yesterday did drop down six tenths of a foot, and hopefully some of this rain gives a nice little boost to the aquifer, and both mountain cedar and mold went up on the high side, and mountain cedar really jumped up from the previous day's reading. It's going to be interesting to see what this morning's reading does just after that uh, strong front move through yesterday with those uh, blustery winds. All right, look at radar right now, and there's a lot out there. We do have uh, showers primarily in parts of the hill country, and that will continue to sort of uh, work its way to the northeast. And as you can see, these showers here are sort of drifting now a little more eastward and this moving up through town. So, yep, going to be a little bit of a damp commute if it's not already, if the roads aren't still left over and kind of damp from yesterday's rain. Got a little bit of fog, especially out to the west this morning from Junction all the way down toward Catula, Laredo, and then a hint of it out there right around the Grange at just a mile and three quarters visibility. And uh, temperatures, again, we are... Pretty consistent thanks to the cloud cover right around mid to upper 40s around here and rain will continue throughout a good chunk of the day and maybe one or two left over Thursday. Friday looks like the nicest day weekend forecast. I'm standing in front of it. A little bit of a tease that's coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority Samuel King and Busy start, right? A little bit of a busy start, and we're starting to see some uh, raindrops on some of the lenses here, including here at 1604 at I-10. There is uh, an incident here on, on the ramp that has that uh, ramp closed to uh, I-10 eastbound toward uh, San Antonio. We can see some movement there, so that might be uh, something good. To, here's a look at the map here, and you can see not really affecting the traffic flow on either 1604 and I-10. And coming in from down uh, from Bernie to downtown, 24 minutes on uh, I-10 from uh, from Bernie. 20 minutes on 90 from Castroville to the east, 30 minutes uh, coming in from Seguin on I-10, 26 minutes on 35 from New Braunfels. Mark, Stephanie, over to you. Samuel, thank you. One local leader says she's excited to see history be made today as President-elect Joe Biden and Vice President-elect Kamala Harris are sworn in. Precinct 4 Constable Catherine Brown started her new role earlier this month, but knows what it's like to break those barriers. Stephen Cavazos is live outside the Precinct 4 offices this morning with more on what the constable has to say. Good morning, Stephen. How are you? Hey, doing well, Mark. Good morning to you and Stephanie back at the station. Now we're here outside Precinct 4 offices off Southeast Loop 410, and now not even a month into her job, Constable Brown is calling it the honor of her life. Now, Brown is the first black woman to ever be elected as a Bear County Constable. It's a moment she can only describe as surreal. Now, Brown says Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. motivated her to take on a leadership role, and she hopes her will, will inspire other women not to hold back. Brown calls Vice President-elect Kamala Harris another inspiration, but she says as leaders, they must also take on the role as mentors to kids across communities. It's going to take for us as public servants, once we make it, to go back and mentor those kids. Um, and that's what I definitely plan to do. They can't get there by themselves. It's going to take for us to continuously give back. Now, Brown won the Precinct 4 race back in November and was sworn into office at the beginning of this month. Now, she believes her victory came at the right time. Now, coming up in the next half hour of GMSA, we'll hear more from Brown, and she shares a message to youth in our community. They can break those barriers as well. That's coming up. Mark Stephanie. Thank you, Stephen. Well, today's inauguration will look different. It isn't stopping some from being in the nation's capital. Bear County Court Judge Rosie Speedlin Gonzalez is there now and spoke to our Erica Hernandez about why she made the trip. Once President-elect Joe Biden and Vice President-elect Kamala Harris were announced the winners of the 2020 election, Judge Rosie Speedlin Gonzalez told her wife, book our flights to D.C. We're booking them for Kamala Harris because she is going to be a history-making uh, woman 
as a woman of color said, we got to be there. That was the impetus behind us coming to D.C. Despite the recent siege on the Capitol and uncertainty of more possible violent protests, Judge Gonzalez is not letting it stop her. We're not going to let someone else put fear into us and change our behavior rooted in fear. We're not afraid of you. And while she knows she can't get close to see the ceremony, Judge Gonzalez isn't complaining. Just to be in the same city, in, in Washington, D.C., for this historic, momentous event is enough for us to be, to be happy to be here. As for the ceremony today, you can watch it live right here on KSAT 12 today, as well as finding extended coverage on our website, KSAT.com. Erica Hernandez, KSAT 12 News. And time now is 510 and 49 degrees for now. Still ahead, why President-elect Joe Biden's exercise bike is causing some security concerns as he moves into the White House. And it's National Penguin Day, how SeaWorld San Antonio is helping people celebrate. Outside with a live cam, not quite as formally dressed as those penguins, but we're here this morning to give you the latest on your headlines. We've got an update with your traffic authority and Mike's forecast. Welcome back. We didn't see this card section at Hallmark or HEB, but today is National Penguin Day, and SeaWorld San Antonio happens to have two very special penguins. Two male Gen 2 penguins are raising a chin strap chick, which is a penguin of a different species. In 2017, a team of aviculturists saw two male Gen 2 penguins building a nest together. They behaved as a pair, taking turns guarding the nest site and sitting just as an expectant parent bird would. They were so attentive to their nest site that after much observation and trial, it was confirmed safe for this pair to serve as foster parents to an egg. Fast forward to 2020, this Gen 2 pair was given a chin strap penguin egg in need of fostering. Not only did they incubate the egg of a different species, they took turns caring for and feeding the chicks as it's hatched back on December 30th. And of course, you can watch the penguins at SeaWorld anytime thanks to the penguin cam. You can view the roughly 250 birds at SeaWorld San Antonio, which include four species of penguins. It's available on all of KSET's platforms, including our KSET TV page, KSET.com, on our free streaming app, and our KSET Kids page. That's a unique story. Yeah, it's interesting. I didn't know about that. Hmm. Didn't know it was National Penguin Day either. Uh, we, we didn't, and we are celebrating. Well, you're, you're dressed. Yes. Uh, I yes. forgot to wear black and white today. <laughs> 515, 49 degrees. And still ahead, Netflix is celebrating a major milestone with its popular streaming service. Plus, why President-elect Biden is bringing a Peloton to the White House or plans to bring the Peloton to the White House cause some security concerns. If you have obstructive sleep apnea and you're often tired during the day, you could be missing out on amazing things. Sinosi can help you stay awake for them. Once daily Sinosi improves wakefulness in adults with excessive daytime sleepiness due to obstructive sleep apnea. Sinosi worked for up to nine hours at 12 weeks in a clinical study. Sinosi does not treat the cause of OSA or take the place of your CPAP. Continue to use any treatments or devices as prescribed by your doctor. Don't take Sinosi if you've taken an MAOI in the last 14 days. Sinosi may increase blood pressure and heart rate, which can increase your risk of heart attack, stroke, heart failure, or death. Tell your doctor if you have a heart condition or high blood pressure. Sinosi can cause symptoms such as anxiety, Anxiety, problems sleeping, irritability, and agitation. Other common side effects include headache, nausea, and decreased appetite. Tell your doctor if you develop any of these as your dose may need to be adjusted or stopped. Amazing things happen during the day. Sinosi can help you stay awake for whatever amazes you. Visit Sinosi.com and talk to your doctor about Sinosi today. In today's Tech Fights, Netflix surpassing 200 million subscribers for the first time. The surge cements the company's dominance in streaming services. The soaring numbers were fueled in part by consumers stuck at home in the pandemic. Samsung's latest rugged tablet is now available here in the U.S. The Galaxy Tab Active 3 measures 8 inches and is designed for use while wearing work gloves. It comes with a case that protects it from falls up to 5 feet. Prices start at about $490. Joe Biden may 
face a cybersecurity issue when he moves into the White House because of his Peloton. The cameras and microphones on the bike could be hacked. A former NSA official says removing them could solve part of the problem. Other suggestions include having Biden pick a nondescript username and change it every month. Those are your Tech Bytes. Have a great Inauguration Day. I wonder if Peloton could make like a super secure encrypted <laughs> I'm sure. version of Peloton. I'm sure they could do something to work it you out. You know, and then you have federal security officials kind of give it the once over and see if it's truly safe or if it's been hacked already. Yeah, it'll it'll be a process, whatever they decide to do. I could be overthinking this just a little bit. <laughs> just about 520, 49 degrees. Oh, we're going to go ahead and check <laughs> in with Samuel King right now. Do you do you have a Peloton? I, I do do not. But I maybe don't if they have the stripped down version without all the fancy stuff. I That's don't know. true. But then it would just be an exercise bike. What? Right. <laughs> so wait, let me get this straight. You don't want to spend three grand on an exercise bike right now? No. I'm right there Sometimes with you. simpler is better. Gym. So <laughs> So I have this situation at 1604 and uh, I-10 uh, west here uh, with uh, on the on-ramp still kind of closed off there. So that's something to watch out for. A little bit of delays on uh, Bandera Road, 12 minutes now between 604 and 410, 10 minutes the other way. And we can look at that uh, right now on Transguide. You can see some raindrops on the lens, and we'll give you another look here at the situation at 1604 and I-10. You can see also raindrops there, but the ramp closed, guys. All right, something yeah. to look out for. Thank you, Samuel. Again, it's called a stationary bike. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Or taking a bicycle and getting the little lift so you just ride your bicycle in the house. Yeah, I mean, you still burn calories. <laughs> Right. Simple, you know, why reinvent the mousetrap? Anyway, uh, beautiful. The moon is just about at its full uh, or first quarter stage, should say, and it's going to be uh, full next Thursday. Yes, next Thursday on the, the 28th. And beautiful picture there. Thank you very much for the KSAC Connect picture. All right, Sam was just talking about a couple of raindrops and some of those trans guide cameras. Nothing showing up on this camera. This is 410 over there at I-10. But there is still plenty of rain around the area. Some uh, light, moderate showers moving through portions of the hill country, obviously moving off to the uh, northeast. And then we've got some of these light showers that are sliding through town right now. So if you are getting ready to head out, uh, an umbrella is not a bad idea and or a rain jacket because temperatures are definitely cooler than what they were yesterday and but we're still not down to normal I'm low 40s in the normal low temperature here in town that's the case out in the hill country 49 in town same thing uh, at the airport I should say Stinson 49 and then 51 right now up the road in New Braunfels so all this rain which has been continuing since yesterday will continue throughout most of the day because we've got this low out there to the west of us and that is helping to that counterclockwise spin throw all this moisture in here from the Pacific across the mountains of Mexico and it's kind of sliding in on top of the relatively cooler air that came on in here in behind the front that moved through yesterday so so with this uh, configuration, when you've got this overrun, you got these clouds, temperatures just about don't go anywhere. We will stay mm, right around low, maybe mid 50s throughout the day. As far as the humidity, uh, it is going to stay relatively speaking up. As a matter of fact, temperatures aren't going to be moving all that much in the overnight hours. We'll stay pretty steady and then warm up uh, tomorrow and going into Friday. Little bits of uh, kind of some fluctuations here as far as the humidity, dew point temperatures, Friday looks like a pretty good day. And then as the humidity increases, the uh, rain chances are also going to be going up as we go into late Saturday, Sunday into Monday. And then another big drop, so it looks like another uh, fairly decent front's going to be moving through here by the uh, middle part of next week. So today, pretty much rain off and on um, throughout the area. Of course, it won't be raining constantly where you are. The majority of it's going to be uh, kind of in the western and northwestern portion of our viewing area. 55 at noon, 57 for high temperature today, so about uh, now roughly 6 degrees below normal. Rain's going to start to kind of ease up tonight then. We'll still have a couple of showers left over tomorrow, and then we get up into the mid 60s, so above normal. 75 Friday, and sort of a mixture of sunshine and clouds. Good looking day on Friday and starting off Saturday. Clouds thicken up, some rain late Saturday, and better chance of rain Sunday. Look at that, 67, 75, 65, 75, up and down. Roller coaster again. Yeah. 523, 49 degrees. Let's take a look at your winning lotto numbers. Pick three, we have 557, five, Fireball 2. Daily 4, we have 0499, Fireball 0. We also have Cash 5, 20, 23, 26, 29, 32. And we have Mega Millions. You're not going to believe this. Nobody won last night. That jackpot is now up to $970 million. But the numbers are there on your screen. Good luck.
You may not like uh, creepy crawling insects, but they play a vital part in our food chain. Scientists are now sounding the alarm that these important insects are dying out. Sarah Costa explains. The world's top bug experts say that insects are quickly declining in population, and this can be dangerous to human population. Climate change, insecticides, herbicides, light pollution, invasive species, and habitat loss are the causes behind the 1 to 2 percent decline in insects every year. Entomologists say in a special package of 12 studies by 56 scientists from around the globe, lead author David Wagner from the University of Connecticut are calling it an insect apocalypse. The problem, they don't have all the pieces to the main reason behind the decline. They are also having a hard time grasping the enormity and complexity of the problem. Wagner says insects are the fabric by which mother nature and the tree of life are built. This rapid loss of the world's insects is problematic because scientists say insects pollinate the world's foods. They are crucial to the food chain and get rid of wastes. Another problem, the general population doesn't like bugs and spends lots of money on getting rid of them with pesticides. We are especially seeing this decrease in honeybees and monarch butterflies, important pollinators who have lost habitats and food sources due to insecticides. Scientists say there is hope individuals can do much to reverse this decline by not using pesticides and planting native flowering plants to provide pollinators a food source. Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. And time now is 528 and 49 degrees for now. Big news day still ahead. We have more on all that security in place at the Capitol for Inauguration Day. And more details on the chocolate milk recall that you need to know about. Hi, good morning. It is Wednesday, January 20th. Thanks for joining us. We're back down to the 40s this morning. Big change from yesterday morning, Mike. Yeah, but still not quite down to normal, but uh, more, at least a little bit more like what it should be in January. And also the nice thing is, you know, we had some beautiful rain yesterday. We still have some gorgeous rain uh, that's showing up on radar right now. We have 49 here in town and humidity is a lot lower after that front move through. Of course, wind came in here from the north and it was fairly breezy yesterday. And it's going to be interesting to see what happens with the, uh, the mountain cedar count when that comes out the updated count later on this afternoon or later on this morning pardon me a lot of rain in the hill country all the way from uh, Blanco Kerrville and this has been fairly steady down toward Uvalde light and a few moderate showers mixed in as well and then we've got these few uh, showers that are sliding north throughout the area so and this uh, on top of what we had yesterday just assume that all the roads are pretty much going to be damp this morning so kind of allow yourself a little extra time take it easy on the gas pedal a uh, three miles visibility rock springs same thing Carrizo Springs and a little bit more in the way of some uh, fog around LaGrange. So just a little bit on the bookends later on uh, throughout the morning hours and temperatures. Yeah, we're in the 40s right now. 40s, a couple of um, 50s here and there. It's not going to move all that much. Showers, chilly, mid 50s. The rain will start to kind of ease off and taper off late this afternoon going into tonight. Now we'll still have a couple of showers around tomorrow and temperatures are going to continue to warm up just a little bit and more sun comes in here on Friday. Friday is going to be almost kind of a spring like day, mid 70s and a little more sunshine mixed in with the clouds. Then the weekend it's going to be mild to warm, so a little bit lower Saturday, still not bad, warmer Sunday, and then in some increasing rain chances late Saturday into Sunday as well. All the details coming up in just a couple of minutes and your traffic authority, Samuel King, what's going on, sir? Hi, good morning, uh, Mike. Still have a situation here, 1604 uh, and I-10 on the uh, on-ramp there, but not really impacting traffic too much, as you can see on either 16 or uh, I-10 there. And we have a new report of a disabled vehicle. This is a, a 35 at, at Nogalitos uh, near 90 uh, on the shoulder there. But again, it's an early hour, so traffic not too bad at the moment. We'll see if that continues. Uh, Fredericksburg Road, the medical center area here, uh, 14 minutes between Heapner and Woodlawn in both directions. And here's a look at some travel times from the region, 25 minutes if you're coming into downtown uh, from Bernie on I-10, 28 minutes uh, on 37 into downtown from from the uh, Pleasanton area this morning. And here's a look at Transguy 10 at Callahan, uh, looking fine uh, this morning, as does 37 at Jones. But again, watch out for some raindrops around the area, guys.
An update on late breaking news this morning. Part of the San Antonio Express News Building downtown has become a crime scene. That's where police have found a man this morning suffering from gunshot wounds. Our Katrina Weber is there with a live report. Now, Katrina, you mentioned earlier that police don't think this is related to the newspaper. Do they have any idea who this man is? Well, that's right, Stephanie. Uh, they don't specifically know who he is. They say he looks like he may be in his 60s, possibly someone who is homeless. But that man wandered into this building, staggered into the building uh, a little bit before 4 o'clock this morning, looking for help, telling people that he had been shot. Police say he did have a gunshot wound uh, in his neck area, possibly more than one gunshot wound. Uh, but they did rush him to the hospital for treatment. Police tell us he was in critical condition unable to talk to officers and tell them where the shooting happened. But again, he did end up here in this breezeway uh, underneath the Express News building. Uh, this is on Avenue E. We're on the backside on Alamo Street. But uh, the police have been processing this area ever since, looking for evidence and trying to figure out uh, exactly what happened to this man and where it may have happened. But again, no relation to anyone here at the newspaper as far as they know. Reporting live downtown, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. But it's 535. Tensions remain high in Washington, D.C. this morning, two weeks after domestic terrorists stormed the U.S. Capitol. Defense officials are reassuring the nation that the forces provided security, providing security for President-elect Joe Biden's inauguration are vetted to ensure they don't have ties to extremist groups. CNN's John Lawrence reports. Less than 24 hours before Joe Biden becomes the 46th president of the United States, at least 12 Army National Guard members are no longer part of Wednesday's inauguration security detail. We're out of an abundance of caution taking action and uh, immediately removing them from, from the line of duty uh, at the Capitol and the events taking place. Defense officials weren't specific about what led to the removals, but said a vetting process revealed these individuals previously made inappropriate comments or displayed questions questionable behavior. We want to make sure that uh, that there's no issues at all and that those properly get looked into. There are approximately 25,000 National Guard troops in Washington, D.C., focused on keeping the area safe during the transition of power. We are taking steps to uh, to ensure that uh, there's no, no concerns. Uh, the American people should have confidence in the National Guard. Acting Secretary of Defense Christopher Miller said Monday there's no intelligence indicating an insider threat to the inauguration. Biden addressing a crowd of supporters in his home state on Tuesday said he's ready to lead the country. I'm truly honored to be your next president and commander in chief. And I'll always be a proud son of the state of Delaware. I'm John Lawrence reporting. U.S. stocks closed higher on the last trading day of the Trump administration, but they came up just short of reaching new record highs. Still, the Dow gained about 116 points to close at 30,930. The Nasdaq gained nearly 200 points and the S&P 500 picked up 30. Hopes are growing that Biden's planned stimulus for the American economy, as well as measures to curb the pandemic, will boost regional markets. Nobody won. The Mega Millions lottery now worth nearly a billion dollars on its own. According to Mega Millions, there was no jackpot winner last night's drawing. That means it now grows to, ready for this, $970 million. Next drawing is Friday night. Tonight's Powerball drawing is for approximately $730 million. A lot of money. <laughs> Unbelievable. 537, 49 degrees. And still had details on a recall of a certain brand of chocolate milk sold in Texas. Plus, what a new study is saying about the effect the pandemic will have on the future of teens and young adults. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, we're at 49 degrees for now, but we're looking at a much cooler day today than we had yesterday. We're going to check in with Mike later in the newscast. Many of us have felt the effects of the pandemic in different ways, and a recent UTSA report sheds light on how teens and young adults could be affected in the future. RJ Markets tells us more about this report and why it could have a lasting impact on people who are ages 16 to 24. They are called Opportunity Youth, 16 to 24 year olds who are not enrolled in school or do not have a job. And in Bear County, the number of people in this group is growing by the day. Dr. Roger Enriquez and researchers at UTSA took a closer look at this group that are moving from childhood to adulthood. They found that this was a vital time in someone's life, and once they get off track, either by dropping out or not working, getting them back on track is very difficult. And what we don't want 
is to have these uh, individuals working at being underemployed or unemployed because that has long-term consequences for the economic well-being of all citizens in the city of San Antonio. The report showed that an estimated 12.5% of 16 to 24 year olds in the U.S. are either not in school or jobless. But here at home, there are nine local zip codes where the percentage is more than 15%. And it's only expected to increase when numbers come in because of the pandemic. The early reports uh, indicate that those numbers could be as high as 20 and 25%. Enrique said those zip codes are largely in the southwest, south, and east sides of San Antonio, where we have seen issues with the digital divide and students, as many as 25% in some local school districts, just fall off the grid. Right? There's no opportunities in the areas in which they live, lack of transportation. In some instances, these students are also limited English proficient. Um, so there's a number of different challenges that sort of coalesce to create this sort of perfect storm. Enrique said now is the time to keep these students in school or create job opportunities before it's too late. The, if we allow uh, our human resources uh, to not invest in, in human resources, we're tr doing a tremendous disservice to the future of San Antonio uh, because uh, you, know, you cannot have a lost generation and enjoy, you know, prosperity. Dr. Enriquez also says opportunity youth are far more likely to be involved in crime, live in poverty, or have physical and mental health problems later in life. You can go to ksat.com to see the full report. RJ Marquez, KSAT 12 News. And time now is 543 and 49 degrees for now. Up next, a new warning from the Better Business Bureau about inauguration scams you need to avoid. Time check 546 in your morning consumer headlines. A dairy company has recalled a batch of chocolate milk after concerns it may contain food grade sanitizers. So look at Highland Dairy Carton. These 248,000 of these have been recalled in Texas and Oklahoma where they were produced. Food grade sanitizers are used to clean surfaces touched by food. The company says that you can uh, that it can also make you sick if consumed. Highland Dairy said it learned about the issue after they tested their product. You can go to the FDA's website for more information. The Better Business Bureau warning people to be careful when buying inauguration memorabilia online. According to the nonprofit, if you're looking for official gear, be aware that there is a lot of counterfeit merchandise being sold at lower prices. But that look lookalike gear is often made with poor quality images. Also, buying online through scam websites can potentially steal your personal information. The BBB says people to says people to are asking people to think twice about buying from social media ads and to make sure any website you are on is a secure one. The pandemic has put a lot of things on hold, especially global travel, but some good has come out of it. Our Sarah Costa explains how less travel around the world may have helped the environment. Emissions that heat the earth fell more than 10% in the U.S. in 2020, according to The Guardian. New figures show that a record drop has been caused by major reductions in travel and industrial activity because of the pandemic. The new estimate by Rhodium Group shows that this is the largest annual drop in emissions since the Second World War. And this puts U.S. carbon pollution at its lowest level in three decades. The record low will also help the U.S. toward the goal of reducing emissions by at least a quarter by 2025, which The Guardian shows was submitted as part of the Paris Climate Agreement. At the peak of lockdowns in April and May, jet fuel demand was down by 68 percent compared to 2019 and car gasoline dropped by 40 percent. The study does point out that the emissions reductions came at a huge cost and will likely rebound as vaccines are distributed. Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. It's now 548. Let's go ahead and check in with Samuel King. How are the roads looking at this hour? Uh, things are improving uh, slightly, especially at I-10 and 1604. We still have this uh, reported incident uh, on the on-ramp, but as you're going to see in, a, in a, just a moment or so, you'll notice that that ramp is now cleared and they've opened uh, that up. But looking at travel times on I-10 this morning, so coming in uh, from Bernie into downtown San Antonio, 25 minutes into downtown, and then between 1604 and downtown looks like 12 or 13 minutes either way, so that's a relatively good time. Uh, we do have this construction later 
later today. Uh, both directions between La Cantera Parkway and Ralph Fair Road. Uh, some work out there, some maintenance work to watch out for uh, throughout this week. That's going to be going on through Friday. And here's a look at that area right now on Transguide. And you can see uh, I-10 West at 1604. You can see it looking pretty clear there. And one more look here just to give you an idea. This is 410 at uh, Marbach, and you can see some of the raindrops on the camera there, so that's something to watch out for this morning, guys. And Mike's about to introduce to sh us to Shara and Rook. Yes, indeed. Got to tell you about these pets. They are looking for homes over there. Look at that little Aww. face. Aww. Shepherd mix, Shara, big fluff ball looking for her <laughs> forever home. She's a smart little girl, knows how to sit, shake, also huge Spurs fan. And then meet Rook, handsome two-year-old terrier American Pitbull mix, one of the remaining pups that were transferred from Louisiana ahead of Hurricane Laura. Very sweet, calm, enjoys his daily walks and treats, don't we all? For more information, please visit SAHumane.org, located 4804 Fredericksburg Road, 226-7461 for more information. Look at it, just give him your paw, <laughs> big smile. Head on out there, lots of cats and dogs up for adoption. All right, beautiful view of the moon, which is almost at its uh, quarter phase, and the full moon's going to be next, uh, next Thursday on the 28th. Great shot out there. Thank you very much for the KSAC Connect picture. Mountain Cedar really went up yesterday compared to the previous day. Uh, 92, almost 9300. Mold is also on the high side. I would imagine both of those are going to remain higher. It's going to be interesting to see what the, today's Mountain Cedar count is. Now, we did have rain, which sometimes washes that out of the atmosphere a little bit from yesterday, but we also had those strong winds. So that uh, updated count is going to be coming out in about, uh, say, an hour and a half or so. Lots of clouds now. Sam showed that one picture, Trans Guide, where we had uh, some rain showing up. Nothing in this picture, but there's a lot of it on radar right now. Obviously, the majority is out there in the hill country, which if you had to kind of, you know, pick a pick a section of our viewing area. Obviously, it will be northwest where the majority of the rain is not only now, but also throughout the next couple of hours. But obviously, there are some showers off to the east as well throughout Wilson County, Floresville, Pleasanton, and then some moving through town right now, basically on the light side, but enough to make things uh, kind of slippery out there. All right, as far as high temperatures yesterday, got up into the low to mid 70s around much of the area. But look at the difference out there in the hill country with that front that moved through sooner. 62 curvilla only mid 50s further out northwest of the hill country. And so now everybody is basically going to be in the mid and kind of upper ish 50s later on today. So we will be shy of normal by about five, six, seven degrees on average. Uh, we'll keep a couple of showers around throughout today and then start to kind of ease up a little bit. One or two of them tomorrow, not as good a rain chances. Then we go into to Friday and Friday we're going to see more sunshine around here mixed in with clouds and very warm as well. So mid 50s today, mid 60s, mid 70s on Friday. We'll dip down a little bit on Saturday, mid 60s and the clouds are going to be increasing throughout the day on Saturday. We'll also maybe see a couple of showers by late Saturday into Sunday and even on Monday, a couple of leftovers. Then we're going to start to clear back out again as well. We do have a little bit of a roller coaster going on as far as temperatures uh, over the next week. Today, 55 at noon, and we're not going to warm up that much, if at all. So it's going to be that kind of damp cool with all this moisture in there that kind of sneaks down the back of your neck. 57 for high today with more showers around here. Then the rain will start to ease up later on this evening, and we'll stay steady overnight. 67 tomorrow, a couple of showers left over. Friday is almost spring-like. Saturday, a little bit of rain late, and then Sunday, again, a spring-like day up to 75, and we'll uh, hopefully get back down closer to normal by next week. Yeah, but Friday looks pretty. We'll take you have it. a smirk on your face. What's going on? <laughs> I, I was born with this. Thank you very much, Mike Oster. Hey, right now it is 552, 50 degrees. <laughs> uh, nothing. <laughs> Let's take a look at your winning lottery numbers. We have pick three, five, five, seven, fireball two, and daily four, zero, four, nine, nine, fireball zero. Cash five numbers, 20, 23, 26, 29, 32. No one won mega, so it's up to 970 million. 10, 19, 26, 28, 50, Mega Ball 16, Mega Plier 2. If you win it, keep it to yourself. A reminder, ABC News will be in live special coverage of Joe Biden's inauguration following Good Morning America starting at 8 this morning. 
The ceremony itself is scheduled for around 1030. ABC special coverage will mean known 9 a.m. or noon newscasts today, but KSAT will have crews on standby. You can, of course, keep tabs on local news at KSAT.com or the KSAT app. You are invited to join us for our virtual mental health awareness town hall. It's a hardship millions of Americans live with. We'll have a panel of experts and explain how mental illness can be dealt with. And uh, that's all coming up Wednesday, January 27th at 2 p.m. You can find more information at ksatcommunity.com. Glad you're with us this morning. More is not always better, but scientists say knowing two languages is better than one. Just ahead on GMSA, we'll see how exposing your child to new language cannot start early enough. Transkai, we're watching for rain and how it could affect your morning commute. We'll check in with Samuel King and meteorologist Mike Ostrage. And of course, the top story of the day, the inauguration of the 46th president of the United States. That is coming up here at the top of the hour. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. And good morning, everyone. Unlike yesterday, it's cooler this morning. You want to grab a jacket and make sure it's got a little bit of waterproofing to it because we do have some rain around here. We'll tell you how long this rain is going to last and take a look ahead to the weekend. Stephanie, Mark. But first, it is a historic day in Washington, D.C. Joe Biden will be inaugurated as the 46th president of the United States today, right around noon. And 78 years old, he will be the oldest president in American history. Meanwhile, the nation is still grappling from the fallout of the riots at Capitol Hill and still fighting a pandemic. President-elect Joe Biden will take office during one of the most tense times in recent memory. CNN's Nadia Romero has more. It's a moment a lifetime in the making for Delaware's favorite son. It gave me a chance when I was just a kid to be elect me to uh, and believed in me and sent me to the United States Senate. With more than 40 years of service in Washington and three bids for the presidency, Joe Biden will be sworn in to the highest office in the land at noon. I'm truly honored to be your next president and commander in chief. Biden setting the tone for his new administration Tuesday night at a memorial service honoring the victims of COVID-19. Let us shine the lights in the darkness along the sacred pool of reflection. Remember all whom we lost. The empty National Mall, a sign of the mounting crises he will need to tackle once seated in the Oval Office. The coronavirus pandemic, a faltering economy and security threats at home and abroad. I know these are dark times. But there's always light. For the first time in more than 150 years, the outgoing president will not be in attendance at the inauguration. This week, we inaugurate a new administration. Donald Trump departs Washington on Air Force One for the final time Wednesday morning as a twice impeached president, leaving behind a nation in turmoil and a new commander in chief who will have to pull it all together. To heal, we must remember. In Washington, I'm Nadia Romero. And one local leader is reflecting on her recent victory as history will be made again today. Precinct 4 Constable Catherine Brown is the first black woman elected as a Bear County Constable. Our Stephen Cavazos is live outside her office this morning. Now, Stephen, you spoke to the constable who says representation has never been more important. That's right, Stephanie. Good morning. It's one of her main messages. Now, less than a month after her November win, Precinct 4 Constable Catherine Brown says it's been the honor of her life. Now, she credits a civil rights icon, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., as one of her main sources of inspiration. But another inspiration she is calling Vice President-elect Kamala Harris. But she says as leaders, they also must take on the role as mentors to kids across communities. Now, she believes her victory and the Biden-Harris win came at the right moment in time. Now, Brown is the first black woman to be elected as Bear County Constable. It was a moment she can only describe as surreal. She wants youth in our community to know they can break barriers just like her and our soon to be vice president. Pay close attention. Look at the pathway in which Ms. Harris has has taken to get to where she's at. Look at the pathway in which I've taken to get to where I'm at and just know that pathway could be yours as well if you just dream and achieve it. 
Brown won the precinct four race back in November and was sworn into office at the beginning of this month. Now she says one of her main focuses is community service and when it becomes safer to do so, she looks forward to heading back out to schools to share that message with you. Mark Stephanie. Thank you, Stephen. While today's inauguration will look different, it isn't stopping some from being in the nation's capital. And that includes Bear County Court Judge Rosie Speedland Gonzalez. She spoke to our Erica Hernandez about why she made the trip and how she feels about her safety. Once President-elect Joe Biden and Vice President-elect Kamala Harris were announced the winners of the 2020 election, Judge Rosie Speedland Gonzalez told her wife, book our flights to D.C. We're booking them for Kamala Harris because she is going to be a history making uh, woman as a woman of color said we got to be there. That was the impetus behind us coming to D.C. Despite the recent siege on the Capitol and uncertainty of more possible violent protests, Judge Gonzalez is not letting it stop her. We're not going to let someone else put fear into us and change our behavior rooted in fear. We're not afraid of you. And while she knows she can't get close to see the ceremony, Judge Gonzalez isn't complaining. Just to be in the same city, in, in Washington, D.C., for this historic, momentous event is enough for us to be, to be happy to be here. As for the ceremony today, you can watch it live right here on KSAT 12 today, as well as finding extended coverage on our website, KSAT.com. Erica Hernandez, KSAT 12 News. And taking a look outside with a live cam this morning. Wow, we're in the 40s. I mean, 49, still the 40s. A lot cooler than it was yesterday, right, Mike? Yeah, and, you know, because yesterday was the anomaly. I mean, that was, you know, we're in the mid-60s, which is well above the normal high temperature. The other thing about being in the 40s, even though number-wise we're not down to a normal low, it's that moisture and that kind of damp chill that really kind of, you know. Yeah, yeah it gets yeah, to yeah. you. <laughs> sneaks down the back of your neck, as I always like to say. And we obviously still have some rain showing up on radar right now. The majority of it is out there in portions of the hill country. We've got these few showers that have been uh, sliding through town. And we'll continue to keep uh, some rain around throughout most of the day and then by late afternoon evening hours things will start to uh, kind of ease up a little bit but we're not completely done with the rain as of yet uh, rock springs two and a half miles visibility mile and a quarter in lagrange so most of it obviously is kind of on the bookends we've got a little bit of fog there around kerrville as well so sort of watch out for that this morning and these temperatures are pretty consistent and uh, add a handful of degrees to these numbers and that's what it's going to be like later on this afternoon. Mountain Cedar and Mold are both on the high side. It's going to be interesting with that wind yesterday to see what happens with the Mountain Cedar count. But then on the flip side of that, we had the rain, which perhaps washed a little bit out of the out of the atmosphere. But that updated count is going to be coming out in about an hour, hour and a half or so. Uh, to this morning, temperatures stay basically where they are. And like I said, we're not going to warm up all that much. We make it to the mid 50s today at noon and only add a couple of notches to that later on this afternoon. And wind is going to be out of the uh, southeast at about 10 to 15 miles per hour. Going to be kind of spring like in the next couple of days. Details on that in just a few minutes. Getting ready to hit the roads. Traffic Authority, Samuel King and uh, well, that picture looks okay. Is that the case around town? Yeah, mostly a case around town. Some of the earlier problems have cleared up. I was just showing the trans guy just to show folks that there are some uh, ring drops uh, to watch out for around the area. And let's take a look here at 1604 and I-10. This is still uh, being reported here uh, on the map, uh, but uh, you can see that traffic is flowing here pretty well. We had a closure uh, on the ramp, so we'll probably be able to take that off the board here pretty shortly. And take a look at some travel times from Bernie, 25 minutes into downtown San Antonio, and I-10, 21 minutes on 90 from Castroville, coming to the east, 23 minutes uh, on 87 from Lavernia, 29 minutes on I-10 from Seguin, 27 minutes coming inbound uh, from uh, Bolverde on 281 and 26 minutes uh, from New Braunfels this morning. Guys, back to you. Thank you, Samuel. Top local story this morning. San Antonio police are trying to figure out who shot a man who was found at the San Antonio Express News Building downtown. They say he staggered to the newspaper's building early this morning looking for help. Our Katrina Weber is live with more on that update on his condition at all. Katrina. Well, the last word we have from police is that man was in critical condition. He was not able to talk to police because he was shot in the neck, they say and they're not exactly sure where the shooting happened, but he did end up here in this breezeway behind me. Now, police just wrapped up their investigation and left here within the last five to 10 minutes, but I have some video to show you from earlier this morning. 
They were called here to the 300 block of Avenue E right before four o'clock this morning. They found the man there in the breezeway of the San Antonio Express News building. But again, police say that it looks like he staggered here looking for help. They don't believe this has anything to do with the newspaper. Again, they don't know where the shooting happened, but that man was in critical condition when he was rushed to the hospital. Police did call his wound life-threatening. Again, they say he was shot at least one time in his neck, but they weren't sure if he had any other gunshot wounds. He appears to be in his 60s, according to police, and they say it's possible he's homeless. Reporting live downtown, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. New this morning, firefighters say a house burned down on the city's east side. This happened just before 3 this morning on the 200 block of Westfall near I-10 in Hackberry. Firefighters say the homeowner was a hoarder and that all that stuff in the attic caught fire quickly. They also say it took a while to extinguish because of all the items inside. And vice investigators are still trying to figure out a cause of the fire, but they say the home has been destroyed. Into the pandemic, local health officials are reporting 2,395 new cases of COVID-19 in Bear County. Ten more people have died from this virus as well. Mayor Ron Nirenberg says the seven-day moving average is still above 2,000 cases per day, although he says the school risk level is still high, which means in-person learning is not recommended. Mayor Nirenberg also says Metro Health received a shipment of Pfizer vaccines, so appointments at the Alamo Dome scheduled for today will go on as planned. However, the South Texas Veterans Health Care System is postponing vaccination walk-ins this Saturday. It impacts locations on Merton, Mentor, and Eckert. Clinics say there were so many walk-ins last weekend that they need to wait for another vaccine shipment to arrive. If you had a scheduled appointment, the clinic says they'll reach out to all veterans to reschedule. Scientists developed the COVID-19 vaccines in record time, and that's causing some people to wonder whether they're safe. So next Wednesday, we will dedicate an hour to the COVID-19 vaccines, the science behind them, how they were developed so quickly, and what they mean for the future. The vaccines ending the COVID-19 pandemic airs on January 27th at 7 p.m. right here on KSET 12, KSET.com, and the KSET TV app. We're approaching 11 minutes past the hour, 49 degrees. It's a unique sight. Two penguins at SeaWorld San Antonio are fostering a different species of penguin. We're going to tell you how you can watch later on GMSA. May not like insects, but they play a vital role in our ecosystem. After the break, why scientists are worried about bugs disappearing. Even the video bothers me, too. <laughs> <laughs> but we need him, I guess. Taking a look outside with Lycam, 49 degrees for now. It's going to kind of stay cool today, so keep that jacket handy. We'll check in with Mike later in the newscast. Approaching 615, welcome back. No matter your personal preference, bugs are a vital part of the food chain. Scientists are now sounding the alarm that these important insects are dying out. Sarah Costa explained a new study that shows the rapid rate insects are disappearing. The world's top bug experts say that insects are quickly declining in population, and this can be dangerous to human population. Climate change, insecticides, herbicides, light pollution, invasive species, and habitat loss are the causes behind the 1% to 2% decline in insects every year. Entomologists say in a special package of 12 studies by 56 scientists from around the globe, lead author David Wagner from the University of Connecticut are calling it an insect apocalypse. The problem, they don't have all the pieces to the main reason behind the decline. They are also having a hard time grasping the enormity and complexity of the problem. Wagner says insects are the fabric by which mother nature and the tree of life are built. This rapid loss of the world's insects is problematic because scientists say insects pollinate the world's foods. They are crucial to the food chain and get rid of wastes. Another problem, the general population doesn't like bugs and spends lots of money on getting rid of them with pesticides. We are especially seeing this decrease in honeybees and monarch butterflies, important pollinators who have lost habitats and food sources due to insecticides. Scientists say there is hope individuals can do much to reverse this decline by not using pesticides and planting native flowering plants to provide pollinators a food source. Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. 
And yet, uh, if I put some crickets in my smoker, I wonder if Stephanie <laughs> would try those. No. Smoke cricket, you want my smoked crickets? No, thank you. What if they got like a really good dipping sauce? No. That's still a no. I will pass, but, but thanks so much for offering. How about you, Mr. King? <laughs> if you don't tell me what it is, uh, that would be fine. Oh. I can do that. <laughs> <laughs> but I can hear, right. but I can hear, I hear they're a good source of protein. Yes. So yes, they are. So um, there you go. I know some people like that stuff, so, but not me. But I'm with you, Sam. <laughs> Traffic looking uh, fine this morning. I had the situation 1604 and I-10, uh, but that's uh, looking okay. So these travel times on 1604 this morning. This is a pretty much a wide berth, but it gives you an idea that things are wide open between uh, 35 and Bandera, about 11 or 12 minutes each way. And then uh, on the uh, west side of 1604, 14 minutes and 15 minutes each way between 35 and 151. So that looks fine this morning. And here's a look at Transguide 37 at Jones. That looks uh, all right, as does 10 at Woodlawn, but some rain drops here or there around the area, guys. So we'll watch out for that if you're driving and heading out this morning. Sam, yes. you just you just set yourself up, man. <laughs> uh -oh. Here, Sam, eat this. To try, to try new Yeah, food. that's true. Yeah. I mean, I but could probably tell. I don't know. But you're, but you're right. I've heard they are protein. <laughs> yes. Yes, supposed to be yes. mm -hmm. somewhat good for you. And of course, and I, crunchy. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yes. Yeah. Like, what do they have, like chocolate-covered grasshoppers and stuff? I, right? I, mm -hmm. I've heard, mm -hmm. yeah. We mm -hmm. had some circulating around the newsroom a yeah. couple mm -hmm. years ago. Mm -hmm. you know. Did you try any stuff in No, I did not. <laughs> Nobody ordered second. <laughs> no, no thank one. you. Nope. Hey, if you're heading out this morning, make sure you allow yourself a little extra time because the roads are on the damp side. Really don't need to uh, take time to, to warm things up. I mean, it's cool out there, but it's not bone chilling cold. It's just that kind of that damp chill out there with 48 degrees with a lot of moisture hanging around and temperatures really aren't going much of anywhere. So yes, you need a jacket throughout the day and uh, maybe even an umbrella, especially out in portions of the hill country. And this is what uh, looked like yesterday. A little bit of sun, at least in this picture, was trying to squeeze through, but not much of it made it on through. I don't think we're going to be seeing much of anything as far as sunshine today. Lots of uh, low thick clouds hanging around here, but tomorrow a little bit more and then uh, plenty of it looks like uh, mixed in with the clouds on Friday, kind of a spring like day on Friday. But first of all, as far as the rain is concerned, yeah, a lot of it's been falling in the overnight hours in portions of the hill country. So you're getting nice, good soaking rain out there, and that's obviously where the lion's share is. But uh, we do still have some of these light showers around here. And uh, as we were just talking in the uh, the Brady Bunch boxes there on the screen, I was looking over uh, Sam's shoulder and saw a lot of those Transguide cameras that did show a couple of raindrops on them. So the roads are definitely kind of on the, the damp side this morning. So going through the rest of today, we'll still have some rain around first portion of the day. It starts to, this model really likes to get things out of here a lot Quicker. I think we still have some lingering showers by later on this afternoon, but then they will start to kind of break up and, and ease up somewhat. Tomorrow, a few scattered showers around the area, maybe a 20% chance. And then we get into, again, Friday, and that's when we're going to be seeing, that's kind of the break in the rain, the one day when there's not any chances of rain, albeit small, nothing on Friday. The reason for all of this, we got this big low out there off the uh, California Baja, and that's what's helping to pump the moisture in from the Pacific across the mountains of Mexico. And, and again, despite the fact that we had that front move through, it didn't clear things out. So that will eventually kind of weaken and ease up, and that's why the rain will temporarily come to an end. It's almost just the tail of two uh, air masses around here. It's really, really cold up there around the, the Great Lakes and uh, right around Ontario and Quebec and moving off to the northeast. But then for us, we're a little milder, and it's going to remain on the, the mild side with minor fluctuations going into the next couple of days. So again, that low sort of uh, kind of falls apart a little bit, and we get into Friday, good-looking day. But then another big trough develops out there to the west, so that will once again enhance rain chances is going into probably late Saturday, Sunday, leftovers on Monday. 55 at noon today, still a few showers around the area. And um, still, I think a couple of them left over later on today, 57 degrees, a high temperature, so about five, six, seven or so below normal. And then we stay steady overnight as the warmer air tries to work its way back in here. Mid 50s tomorrow, mid 60s in the afternoon, couple of showers with some sunshine. Spring like on Friday, a shower late Saturday, and this we have these little fluctuations in temperatures, and then back to the mid 70s with uh, some showers on Sunday. And I think we finally get rid of some of the humidity then by the uh, middle part of next week. All right, humidity free, I'll take it.
not free free, but you know, just much lower than <laughs> not as bad as yesterday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yucky yeah. yesterday. <laughs> Six twenty one, forty nine degrees. And today is National Penguin Day. You can celebrate with SeaWorld San Antonio. <laughs> Find out how you can watch Penguin Cam and why it's so special. Here is your secret word of the day. Enter it on ksat.com slash circle K for a monthly chance to win free gas for a year. Every entry wins a medium coffee. Win with Circle K and GMSA. Loves me? Loves me not. New Neutrogena Skin Balancing. Three made-for-you formulas with 2% PHA. Exfoliate and condition for soft, balanced skin. Find the one. Neutrogena. It's very common to have both sensitivity and gum issues. Dentists and hygienists will want to recommend Sensodyne Sensitivity and Gum. You get the sensitivity relief as well as improved gum health, all in one. At Panera, we didn't just raise the bar. With warm roasted chicken, fresh broccoli, and a savory glaze, we raised the bar on the bowl. Order our new teriyaki chicken and broccoli bowl for delivery or pickup today. Panera. What we love can be painful. Asper Cream works fast and lasts, so you can keep doing what you love. Asper Cream now has a new look. Same pain-fighting power. Six twenty-five. It is game day, everyone. The San Antonio Spurs back in action tonight. The team is in San Francisco to play the Warriors. Tip-off scheduled for nine o'clock San Antonio time. Watch the game on Fox Sports Southwest or tune in to GMSA tomorrow for the score, highlights, and reaction. And today is National Penguin Day. And SeaWorld San Antonio happens to have two very special penguins to highlight today. Two male Gen 2 penguins are raising a chin strap chick, which is a penguin of a different species. So not only did the two male penguins incubate the egg of a different species, they took turns caring for and feeding the chick after it hatched back on December 30th. And right now you can see all the penguins, including the Gen 2 penguins, on SeaWorld's Penguin Cam. You can head over to KSET Kids section of our website at KSET.com to watch it all. It's an amazing story. Yeah, it is. Cute little chick. Time now is 625 and 49 degrees for now. Well, President-elect Joe Biden will be inaugurated as the 46th president of our republic today. We'll take a look at the ceremonies planned later this morning and how you can watch them all. its way to the newspaper's downtown building. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. Police say they found a man shot here. I'll tell you more about it. Fair County Precinct 4 Constable Catherine Brown reflects on her historic win as we prepare for another historic day. That coming up. President-elect Joe Biden is set to become the 46th President of the United States. I'm ABC's Elizabeth Schulze, live from the Capitol. The latest on the inauguration coming up. And here at home, home outside with live cam bundle up, but we're back down into the 40s after being in the 60s yesterday morning. A chilly and somewhat wet start. Hi, good morning. It is Wednesday, January 20th. Thanks for joining us. Traffic is coming up with Samuel King, but first up, meteorologist Mike Osterhage. Good morning, everybody. And just looking at temperatures, no, it's not anything, you know, bone chilling. We've been a lot colder than that, but when you have those temperatures and then you got a lot of humidity out there, temperatures in the 40s and plenty of humidity uh, and a little bit of a breeze. Yeah, it's kind of that bone chilling where it just kind of kind of sinks down the back of your neck because of the uh, the moisture out there. And speaking of which, yeah, we do have plenty of rain. It's been uh, raining fairly constantly in the overnight hours in parts of the hill country. Most of it is on the light to uh, maybe a couple of moderate showers there and then we've had all of these light showers kind of off and on moving through town and yeah just over the course of the past couple of hours there's been rain just about everywhere so as you're getting ready to hit the roads just assume that the roads are damp so allow yourself a little extra time and then there is some fog uh, pretty much on the bookings a little bit on the range but especially out here in the hill country junction all the way down toward uh, Laredo four miles visibility in Rock Springs we're not going to be dealing with any of that here because we do have some of that uh, that breeze and temperatures overall or everybody is definitely on the warm side low 40s uh, Kerrville Fredericksburg Rock Springs right now at 39 and a little bit of light rain is being reported throughout obviously most all of the, uh, the hill country. Mountain Cedar and Mold are both on the high side. It's going to be interesting to see what this does when the updated count comes out later on this morning. 
We had the windy conditions yesterday, but also the rain. Did it wash any of that out? Kind of wait and see situation with that. So showers, chilly. Rain's going to be ending. Now it's going to stay chilly all day long, mid 50s. Rain's going to be ending later on today. And then the rest of the week, tomorrow and Friday, a couple of showers are possible tomorrow. We are definitely going to be warming mid 60s tomorrow. Add about 10 to that for Friday and some more sunshine. Then we get into the weekend. Mild, a little down a little bit Saturday, warm again Sunday, and we will have a few more showers around here developing late Saturday into Sunday. Details in just a couple of minutes. Talk about hitting the roads, your traffic authority, Samuel King, and early, well, I just... Before I spoke, a couple of accidents, right? Well, well this looks uh, worse uh, than it is, Mike. The 1604 and 410, uh, and I-10, excuse me, incident seems to have cleared up. And this uh, thing in the center here is what uh, Katrina Weber is going to tell us about in a little bit, but not really affecting traffic too much. Uh, let's take a look at 410 on the west side. Good morning to you if you're heading out. Uh, good times here between Ray Ellison and 151, uh, four or five minutes uh, either way, even though traffic is starting to build. And looking at uh, travel times, let's look the other way here going outbound. 25 minutes if you're heading out uh, from downtown to Bernie. If you commute up to New Braunfels, uh, 26 minutes uh, this morning going that direction. And taking a look at Transguide, uh, Loop 410 at uh, Marbach, we're just mentioning traffic starting to build out there as, as Loop 410 at New Braunfels. Mark Stephanie, over to you. Thank you, Samuel. Police say it doesn't appear that there's any connection between the San Antonio Express News and a man who was found shot in its building early this morning. They say the man went to the newspaper's downtown building looking for help. Our Katrina Weber is there with a live report. Now, Katrina, did they find out yet where the shooting happened? No, they did not. They say that the victim was not able to tell them anything because of his injuries. He was shot in his neck area at least one time, and he did come here to the Express News early this morning looking for help. The police got the call shortly before 4 o'clock this morning. They arrived here in the 300 block of Avenue E, and they say that they found the man in there critically injured. He was suffering from at least one gunshot wound in his neck. He was rushed to a hospital. Police stayed here for a good hour or so, uh, collecting evidence in the breezeway of this building that does belong to the newspaper. But they say it doesn't look like there's any connection between the man who was shot and the newspaper at all. They believe he just simply came here looking for help. They're still trying to identify that man. They say he appears to be in his 60s, and they believe that he may be homeless. Reporting live from downtown, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. And San Antonio police say they arrested a woman connected to a murder. According to an arrest affidavit, police arrested 22-year-old Elisa Wees. They say she drove three men to a house in the 8600 block of Lumpkin Court back on July 14th. The three men then killed a woman inside. Police say there were three other teens and two kids in the house who were able to identify Wees and some of the other men. Wees now faces charges of capital murder. San Antonio police also arrested a man they say is a serial arsonist. That's according to an arrest affidavit. Police say they find they found 35 year old Michael Brown lighting a mattress on fire outside an apartment complex yesterday morning. They say Brown admitted to igniting eight fires total throughout the night. The fire caused damage to several dumpsters and a telephone pole. He now faces charges of arson. It is Inauguration Day in the nation's capital. Joe Biden and Kamala Harris set to be sworn in as president and vice president of the United States today around 11 San Antonio time. President-elect Biden is expected to lay out his plan for how to unite the country. ABC's Elizabeth Schulze is at the U.S. Capitol with the details. Good morning. Well, two weeks ago, rioters stormed this building. And today, where we are standing here at the Capitol, it is a fortress. The top priority today is a peaceful transfer of power as President-elect Joe Biden prepares to take his oath of office. In an inauguration unlike any other, Joe Biden is set to become the 46th president of the United States. Receive the president-elect opening his inaugural events with a solemn ceremony at the steps of the Lincoln Array. Memorial. 400 lights to honor the more than 400,000 American lives lost in the pandemic. A sobering reminder of the crisis facing a divided nation as he takes office. To heal, we must remember. The president-elect will start his day at church, joined by congressional leaders from both parties. Today, there will be no parade or inaugural balls. Instead of crowds, 200,000 flags will wave from the National Mall. Sources tell ABC News Biden will project a message of unity in his inaugural address. 
Speaking from the same sacred place that was stormed by pro-Trump rioters exactly two weeks ago. The Capitol is now surrounded by armed guard members, barricades and checkpoints. In a farewell video, President Trump wished Biden well without naming him. We inaugurate a new administration and pray for its success. The president spent his final hours at the White House issuing a slew of pardons. Trump will break 150 years of tradition by not attending the inauguration. And in a nod to the history she'll be making today, soon to be Vice President Kamala Harris will be sworn in using the Bible of Thurgood Marshall, the first black justice on the Supreme Court. Elizabeth Schulze, ABC News, the Capitol. So uh, just hours away from President-elect Joe Biden and Vice President-elect Kamala Harris being sworn in. Precinct 4 Constable Catherine Brown back here in Barrett County calling it a historic day for a number of reasons. Our Stephen Cavazos is, is live outside the Precinct 4 offices this morning. As Brown says, we will reach another milestone. Good morning, Stephen. Hey, good morning, Mark. Now, if anyone knows about breaking barriers, it's Precinct 4 Constable Catherine Brown. Now, she became the first black woman to ever be elected as a Bear County Constable. It's something she calls the honor of her life. Now, Brown, who was sworn in about a month ago, says Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. motivated her to take on this leadership role. Brown calls Vice President-elect Kamala Harris another inspiration. She says as leaders, they must share that message that representation is important. Not only do they have a voice, but they have an appearance. Uh, just look at me and, and, and let that be your model to say, you know what, if she did it, so can I. Now she says one of her main focuses is community service and when it's safer to do so, she looks forward to visiting schools and sharing that message with you. So now one of the other things she is hoping for Mark and stuff is that people take a look at the groundwork that she, Vice President-elect Harris and other leaders have laid. Her message to everyone on this historic day, if you dream it, you can achieve it. Mark Stephanie. And ABC will have special coverage all day to cover President-elect Joe Biden's inauguration. It starts at 8 this morning with live coverage of the event. The inauguration and swearing in will begin at 1030 this morning. You can watch it all live right here on KSET 12 or watch our live stream on KSET.com. We will not have our GMSA at 9 or new newscast, but you can watch KSET's news at 5 this evening. And many of us have felt the effects of the pandemic in different ways, and a recent UTSA report sheds light on how teens and young adults could be affected in the future. RJ Marcus tells us more about this report and why it could have a lasting impact on young people between the ages of 16 and 24. They are called Opportunity Youth, 16 to 24 year olds who are not enrolled in school or do not have a job. And in Bear County, the number of people in this group is growing by the day. Dr. Roger Enriquez and researchers at UTSA took a closer look at this group that are moving from childhood to adulthood. They found that this was a vital time in someone's life, and once they get off track either by dropping out or not working, getting them back on track is very difficult. And what we don't want is to have these uh, individuals working at being underemployed or unemployed because that has long-term consequences for the economic well-being of all citizens in the city of San Antonio. The report showed that an estimated 12.5% of 16 to 24 year olds in the U.S. are either not in school or jobless. But here at home, there are nine local zip codes where the percentage is more than 15%. And it's only expected to increase when numbers come in because of the pandemic. The early reports uh, indicate that those numbers could be as high as 20 and 25%. Enrique said those zip codes are largely in the southwest, south, and east sides of San Antonio, where we have seen issues with the digital divide and students, as many as 25% in some local school districts, just fall off the grid. Right? There's no opportunities in the areas in which they live, lack of transportation. In some instances, these students are also limited English proficient. Um, so there's a number of different challenges that sort of coalesce to create this sort of perfect storm. Enrique said now is the time to keep these students in school or create job opportunities before it's too late. The, if we allow uh, our human resources uh, to not invest in, in human resources, we're doing a tremendous disservice to the future of San Antonio uh, because uh, you, know, you cannot have a lost generation 
and enjoy, you know, prosperity. Dr. Enriquez also says Opportunity Youth are far more likely to be involved in crime, live in poverty, or have physical and mental health problems later in life. You can go to KSAT.com to see the full report. RJ Marquez, KSAT 12 News. 641, 49 degrees. And more is not always better, but scientists say knowing two languages is better than one. After the break, we will see how exposing your child to a new language cannot start early enough. Oh, see. Sí. Oh, sí. Daniel Perez and Jenny Ring Perez started speaking Spanish to Camila and Alessandra at birth. I was really committed that these girls really have Spanish as one of their languages so that they can really know themselves as being also from Costa Rica. They also had Spanish speaking teachers and time with Daniel's family in Costa Rica. During this pandemic, parents and children have had more time at home together to hone their language skills. What I noticed is that uh, their phonetics is pretty impressive to see. Da. Da. That's what Naya Ferian Ramirez found in her study. She measured brain waves from 11 month old and found they're already learning the language or languages they've been hearing. At the time that they're getting ready to say their first words, they're already primed to do that. Bilingual babies showed strong responses to both languages and had stronger brain responses in areas that are responsible for executive function. Ferian Ramirez says the infant brain is capable of learning two languages simultaneously. If we give babies an opportunity to experience a second language during infancy and early childhood, they will be able and should be able to develop native-like fluency. Researchers at the Institute for Learning and Brain Sciences say a child who hears only one language will lose the ability to distinguish between sounds that don't occur in English, while a bilingual child will continue to be able to differentiate between those sounds. Max Massey, KSAT 12 News. Right now, 646. I was looking at some of those traffic cameras, Samuel. It looks like there might be some rain out there on the roadways. Yeah, definitely something uh, to uh, watch out for uh, today. A couple of these incidents here are from earlier, but things have uh, uh, cleared out. So we do have some construction to tell you about. Uh, this is I-10 uh, out west between La Cantera Parkway and Ralph Fair Road. Uh, both directions, some intermittent lane closures to watch out for. And also on 410 between uh, Marbach and Culebra uh, this week between uh, 9 and 3 this afternoon. There's some construction intermittent uh, lane closures there, too. So you can watch out for that. And as Stephanie, you were mentioning the Transguy cameras, 281 at Grayson. You can see uh, the raindrops there as well as 281 at the quarry, Mike. Yeah, you might as well just assume that all the roads in and around town are getting ready to head out this morning are definitely going to be on the uh, the damp side, either from yesterday's rain or uh, this morning. And then also yesterday, beautiful shot looking uh, down to the south. And yeah, we we're trying to get a little bit of sun to peek on through. And I highly, highly doubt we see anything as far as any sunshine peeking on through today. And here's some of the showers. Actually, uh, kind of a moderate shower is working its way in toward Bandera right now over there around uh, Lakey and Rock Springs. And it's been almost nonstop as far as rain in the hill country in the overnight hours and obviously those few showers here basically right along 90 and north of there but we've had a lot of a move on up through the north uh, from north south to north pardon me throughout the uh, the course of the morning and this is going to continue throughout most of the day then rain is going to start to kind of taper off a little bit the majority of it obviously being up there to the uh, northwest in the hill country and it's all because of that big low off to the west of us off the uh, Baja of California and that's been sitting there spinning and pumping all this moisture in here and that's what came in on top of we obviously had some showers before the front moved through yesterday, but even with the front moving through still had the rain in over top of it. That's why we didn't completely clear on out. Flip side of things, it is cold and going to be getting even colder out there up there to the uh, north of us. Big chunk of cold air, but it's not going to come anywhere near us. As a matter of fact, we're going to be just the opposite and on the warm side of things going in toward the next couple of days, except for today we will be cool and we still keep some of the showers, just a few scattered about this afternoon. And again, this model is kind of a, a broad brush, but uh, tomorrow we'll see just one or two leftover showers around then Friday is going to be the day where there's no rain chance around here. And as a matter of fact, we'll see some more sunshine. It's going to be kind of spring like on Friday, mid 70s and mixture of sunshine and clouds. Start off with uh, clear.
clearer skies on Saturday and then uh, some rain chances start to move back into the picture Saturday and especially on Sunday, then that's all going to be moving on out and we get another uh, bit of a front trying to move on through here by the middle part of next week. So again, there's that low and it starts to uh, keeps enough energy pumping in here and starts to fall apart. And so that's why we get that break in the action on Friday. Another big trough develops out there to the west of us, pours more moisture back in here. And we get that little wave moving on through, and that's what will enhance rain chances uh, Sunday into Monday. And looks like even another low wants to develop out there to the west of us. So it is kind of a uh, almost a spring like pattern that we're going to be getting into today. It's not even going to feel like it should. We're going to stay at 55 degrees, so damp, cool out there with a couple of showers throughout the uh, the day, and topping off only at 57 degrees. Normal lows in the uh, excuse me, normal highs in the low 60s, and then we stay steady overnight and mid 50s, 60. 77 tomorrow, 75, so add about 10 each and every day. A little bit lower Saturday, a couple of showers late, and then a little bit better chance of rain once again on Sunday and even a leftover shower on Monday. But yeah, overall, I mean, with the exception of this afternoon, all those numbers are above their respective normals. But getting the rain that we need. Yeah, Hill Country has been nice, steady, soaking all morning. Very good. Thank you, Mike. Thank you. 650, 49 degrees. And a new research shows there is a link to poor health in your gut and more severe cases of COVID-19. Tomorrow on Good Morning San Antonio, the latest on a new scientific review and what you can do to start improving your gut health right now. Outside with live cam, kind of a dreary start to our Wednesday. More to come after the break. A call about a shooting brings police to the downtown building of the San Antonio Express News. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. Police say they found a man who had been shot in the breezeway of this building here in the 300 block of Avenue E. The police got the call shortly before 4 o'clock this morning. They believe that the man staggered to this building looking for help. They say he had been shot at least one time in his neck. He was not able to talk to officers at all, so they're not exactly sure where the shooting happened but they do not believe it had anything to do with the newspaper or its building. They simply believe the man came here looking for help. They say he appears to be in his 60s and they believe he may be homeless. But again, no word on where that shooting happened or who may have shot him. Reporting from downtown, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. A programming note, there will be no GMSA at 9 or news at noon today because of the presidential inauguration. But starting at 8 this morning, you can watch ABC's live coverage of the event. The inauguration and swearing in ceremonies will begin at 1030 this morning. You can watch it all live on KSET 12 or live stream it on KSET.com. KSET will resume our newscast at 5 this evening. 5 till, let's check on traffic with Samuel King. All right, things looking okay, but traffic is uh, picking up a little bit. So let's take a look at some travel times. If you're commuting from New Braunfels into downtown, 27 minutes on 35, 31 minutes on I-10 from Seguin, 25 minutes on I-10 from Bernie. Let's take a look at Transguide, uh, 1604 at uh, Calabria, 10 at Callahan. A little rain drops throughout the area, Mike, this morning. Yeah, we've seen more rain in a lot of those Transguide cameras than we were earlier this morning, and nothing showing up at least here, but still plenty of uh, rain out there, especially in the hill country where it's been raining most of the morning and a lot of light showers that have been moving on through and 48 degrees right now. Temperatures are still above normal, but still, you know, kind of that dampish cool and we're not going to be warming up all that much today. Mid maybe upper 50s throughout the day. We'll continue to warm up the next couple of days and then another chance of rain really comes back into the picture Sunday into Monday. Overall, kind of a spring like pattern. Yeah, not too bad. Looking forward to Friday though. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And thanks for joining us today. All right, Good Morning America is about to start. Special election coverage, or rather inauguration coverage, beginning at 8.